What's happening, Hardscapers? Today, we're going to talk about this. And what this is, is HPB, or High Performance Bedding. It's an angular crushed aggregate, and it's completely clean or clear. And what that means is that there's no dust fragments in this. It's completely clear of any fines for the most part. And it's actually called High Performance Bedding because it's a trademark name by Dufferin Aggregates a division of CRH Canada Group. So it's essentially a marketing term of an aggregate that's about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch in size. It's fractured, it's angular crushed, and it's clear. So there's several different products like this on the market. But what you don't wanna see with your high performance bedding or HPV or quarter inch to three eighths inch crushed clean is rounds in it. And I've seen this with a lot of projects that I lift up and relay, especially in the past, because as this aggregate has become increasingly popular, there's many different gravel pits trying to bring to market a similar product. And what you see with the knockoffs are round stones mixed in it. And this round stone doesn't give the same compaction rate that an angular crushed HPB would. So that's the first thing that you need to look for in any HPB, high performance bedding, anything that claims to be that in that one quarter inch to three eighths inch angular crush stone. And with a proper HPB, you're gonna get upwards of 90% compaction rating with it by just simply putting it into place. And this is the major benefit and the number one reason why we use this in our bedding layers, no matter what the base preparation method is, with the exception of a concrete overlay. You just don't get the same compaction rating when you're using a concrete sand for your bedding layer. And although you'll see that final compaction of the pavers once the jointing compound is installed into the joints and consolidated to the bottom of the joint, you'll likely see optimal compaction ratings for your interlocking concrete pavement. It's still just much nicer to work with an aggregate that's already at that 90% level. And because of this, I've seen contractors use it for their full base in a pedestrian application. Now, I don't recommend this at all, but I know with my first project, when I first did one on the side, I actually did this for a front walkway and it still looks great more than 10 years later. But like I said, I do not recommend this and I have not done one like this or continue to install a full depth base with this material today. Today I mostly rely on two different base preparation methods. One being an open graded base and you cannot use concrete sand in an open graded base. It must be an angular crushed clean chip like HPB or a synthetic base if the project is following the existing grade. And with a synthetic base, you can use a quarter inch to three eighths inch angular crushed stone or concrete sand as a bedding layer before the panels are put on top. With the geosynthetic base, you can use a concrete sand. We choose to use a quarter inch clean stone. Water goes all the way through it, no fines in it. A uh, concrete sand, on the other hand, would hold a little bit of moisture in there, not drain as freely. You also need to compact the concrete sand after you've screeded it out. This, we just screed out and that base is gonna go on top. The paver base panels are going to go on top. Now, the reason why HPB is so much better for this application as opposed to using a concrete sand is that if you use concrete sand, you have to compact it afterwards prior to actually installing the paver base panels on top of it. And this compaction can cause inconsistencies in that bedding layer even if you screeded it, caused by you just walking on it with the plate compactor or just pivoting the plate compactor on its axis. So with those inconsistencies, they need to be addressed prior to installing the paver base panels on top of them, which leads to just another step in the process of your installation. Whereas if you use HPB as that bedding layer, put the paver panels on top and then put your pavers and do that final compaction, once the jointing compound is installed, that's all you're doing and you're eliminating that step of having to compact that bedding layer and to feather out any inconsistencies with more material. Additionally, if you move to an open graded aggregate and open graded bases, you're able to work through rainfall if necessary. If you're using a concrete sand that can get washed out with a torrential downpour and it could ruin the step of having screeded that already. With HPB, you just don't see that. And it's just an incredible product to work with for that bedding layer and screeding out. So if you're experiencing less washout in the installation process, you'll also experience less washout when it comes to the final product. For example, a raised patio. If there's any slight gaps in that retaining wall for that raised patio, sand and other fines will wash through it over time. Whereas with a clean stone, a clean aggregate that doesn't experience that same washout, you're not gonna get that. The less water that is close to the pavers is going to be the most beneficial for that system. 
Stone dust does not provide proper drainage, concrete sand provides better drainage, and HPB is the best because it's an open graded aggregate. This is the most beneficial for that pavement because it will prevent problems like efflorescence. Now the reason why we don't use it on overlays is that we usually only have about a quarter of an inch to work with for a concrete overlay to get some sand in to allow for that drainage of any water that enters that system. And with HPB being a quarter inch crushed chip, we just can't get more than one layer of that crushed stone in it. And it's really just too inconsistent if you can't get enough of that HPB in there. That's why we just opt for concrete sand for those concrete overlays. But even in a traditional base where we use a gravel as the base material and really we only do this for front walkways where we're tying into an asphalt driveway where the asphalt company is going to use that same material, I'm still going to use the HPB on top of that a gravel. Reason being is that it's just so much easier to work with it when compared to concrete sand. Now I also acknowledge that ICPI states that concrete sand is the bedding material of choice because of the interlock that it provides when you compact the pavers into it. And with that, the concrete sand will work its way up into the joint from the bottom, as well as work the jointing compound down to meet that bedding layer. And the argument being is that you won't experience that same lockup from the bottom up with using HPB as your bedding layer. And I can agree with some of that. But having said that, I've done a lot of lift and relays in my time, even with HPB used as the bedding layer. And when I'm removing the pavers, I definitely see some of that HPB working up into the joint because it leaves the outline of the paver when I lift it up in that bedding material still. This also does depend on the joint width. The wider the joint, the more HPB can work its way up the joint from the bottom up. And I believe some of that is also achieved with using polymeric sand down into the joint, which meets that clean stone, causing the polymeric sand to bleed a little bit into that clean stone. And that's where some of the lockup might come from. And with all that said, I've never used HPB on a commercial project. I've never done a commercial project, perhaps with more vehicular traffic on a project, I would opt for maybe a concrete sand so that I get that lockup. But ultimately, HPB is my bedding layer of choice for these reasons. The only downside being is that since it's a clean aggregate, the jointing compound that you use will go down into it very minimally. And in my experience, it's no greater than 10% the amount more to which you would use compared to any other traditional install on concrete sand. But really when it comes down to it, if you're using concrete sand and you're used to it and you don't want to change, concrete sand is still a good bedding material choice. I just totally prefer HPB for my projects. The one thing that you should never use though is stone dust. And we've already talked about that in a previous video so go watch that video if you're using stone dust hopefully that changes your mind in the future when it comes to installing and start moving towards HPB or an open graded stone for your projects to see the benefits that they provide. I'd love to know your comments on this video leave them in the comment section below let me know what bedding material you use for your projects if you used HPB in the past or if you plan to move forward in the future to use it. Are you using open graded base, synthetic base, a traditional base? Leave it all in the comment section below I would love to know what you are using. Like this video if you found it helpful at all and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.